Tick Coleman left uh, a legacy, but in that legacy, he also left branches. And those branches continue to do some incredible things. Uh, and I am, in turn, had mentees at the institution as well as those who have graduated. And so, through his branches, I have created, I have been, I am on that branch, and now I have created my own branches. So, again, his legacy is extremely important to this institution. It should always be talked about every year at the Dr. Frank Tick Coleman Luncheon. I met Tick Coleman in 1996 as an Omega, and I forget exactly how I found out that he was a scouter, but when I found out he was a scouter, he was more than just my frat brother. He was a frat brother who was also a scouter. And so uh, at the time that we uh, met Tick Coleman, and made an association with him. At the time, he was approximately uh, 93 or 94. Mm -hmm. And to the best of our knowledge, he was one of the oldest Eagle Scouts um, alive in the nation and uh, probably the oldest, if not the oldest, black Eagle Scout in the uh, country at the time. And so we... Uh, um, recognize his achievement because at the time that he made Eagle Scout it was rare for uh, black youth to be in scouting it was almost rare for them to reach that level and one of the things that we did is that we gave him a uh, honorary distinction of being a member of Troop 133. Can you tell us about how you met Tick Coleman? Or knew about uh, we met Tick Coleman uh, that um, one of our fathers at the time was, uh, uh, one of our scout fathers was a news reporter for the Philadelphia Tribune and uh, his son was uh, in scouting and he knew about Tick Coleman and said that it would be a great idea if we could uh, bring Tick Coleman uh, to one of our war ceremonies. So we extended that invitation and he accepted and he came and uh, he talked to our scouts. And so it was really uh, sort of a historic event for our scouts uh, who were starting out getting introduced to scouting and being able to meet uh, an African-American man who had got involved in scouting uh, at the same age as they were but doing it at a time when one, scouting had just been introduced to the country and the fact that he was an African-American in scouting was also significant in history. My son who became an Eagle met Tick as a Cub Scout and later in life uh, did a report on Tick for Black History Month uh, when he was in school. He's, he's now a freshman at Temple University, but I'm glad that he had a chance to meet Tick. And when I talk to him days, he still remembers meeting Tick. I mean, that's what we have to do. We have to show our sons the men whose behavior we want them to follow. Yes. Had the distinction of talking about the challenges that he went through. For example, one of the things that you had to do to become an Eagle Scout was earn a swimming mirror badge. Well, for him, there was virtually no pool in the city of Philadelphia that would allow him to practice his swimming. So he did his swimming in the Schuylkill River. And these are mirror badges. They are like college courses. Some of them are easy, some of them are harder. And a scout to become an Eagle Scout has to earn at least 21 with all the required, which include about 13. And what is significant at the time is that the statistic is still, which has been standing for almost 100 years, that only four out of every 100 boys who ever 
come into scout and reach the rank of Eagle Scout. And so it's pretty extraordinary that Tech was able to do this in the 1920s uh, with all the challenges that African Americans have. And so it was harder for any boy to reach that level uh, and we can only imagine the obstacles that he had to overcome to reach that level. We up in the South, so our merit badge counselors were black because it was completely segregated when I was a kid. But he had stories about how he would go to a merit badge counselor's house. They wouldn't let him in the house. He'd have to show his stuff on their front porch. And in some neighborhoods, he had to get there and get out before Doc. He was a quarterback, and he was a good quarterback. And he led uh, Central High School to, I mean, all kinds of wins. And the only reason, as we reflect on it, why he was not picked up by any of the local schools, like University of Pennsylvania, Temple, at the time, they were the big the schools. Maybe even Westchester State Teachers College, that's when it was then. Was and outside the state was because of his race. Well, on that, you know, I listened to his stories about when he played football for um, Central High. He was the first black quarterback there. And there were situations where, you know, Tick wasn't allowed to dress in the locker room. I mean, the things that Tick went through and weathered the storm. Um, made you proud and also made you realize that if he could do that, you can do what you're experiencing today. Do you think he ever thought about quitting? Uh, he never talked about, I don't think that word was in his vocabulary. Mm. You know, he just, like I said, he was the essence of perseverance, uplift, and manhood, and scholarship. He, he was the essence of, or the personification of the cardinal principles of Omega Psi Phi. Distinguished record in terms of being a, uh, a student at Central High School. He was one of the first black captains of the Central football team. He was a quarterback. So he, he had a very, very um, extraordinary uh, story behind him. And it was very interesting, not only to the youth, but uh, the adults who uh, didn't know him. So it was really an honor and a pleasure uh, to meet him and to know that uh, here was this individual, a very humbled man who had done some extraordinary things and was able to share his story with us and our scouts. I guess, what, what's the lasting impression you have of Dr. Ted Coleman? Uh, that he is definitely driven and wants to, you know, push the positive aspect and the importance of scouting in the African-American um, neighborhoods and communities. Do you have anything else you want to say? Uh, he was a great guy. I'm contacted by Tick. Tick and Thomas S. Logan, class 35, write letters for me to go to Lincoln. When I send my application, I get acceptance to Lincoln. That's how I got to Lincoln University. So when you said that Tick volunteered at Lincoln, what did he do as a volunteer? He worked for the president's office. He was also a guy, whenever you went to an alumni meeting, I don't care if it was in Philadelphia, New Jersey, in Baltimore, or D.C., you would see Tick Coleman walking in. His job, I don't know. Do you think Tick would be happy about the, about the state of Lincoln University, the current state of Lincoln University? I think he would be happy to see that it's, st it's stable now. Mm -hmm. uh, I think also that he is one of those guys that did whatever it can to make Lincoln better. Uh, I just remember the guy riding back and forth every day to campus, not getting paid, but only getting paid for his mileage. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was great on his part. So what was he riding back and forth for? He was, he was special assistant to the president. Um, do you think Tick Holman will be pleased with the current state of Lincoln University? I think Tick would would enjoy the fact that we're moving forward. I just... What do you think Tick Holman's legacy is as it relates to Lincoln University? Uh, I, I just think he's a you know a, a tremendous uh, ambassador for the school, uh, a person that really cares about not only the students, the faculty, the administration, 
the alumni, but but everybody. And um, uh, he is Mr. Lincoln. I mean, uh, we have a lot of prestigious graduates, but uh, you know, Tick is certainly one of the best. I met Dr. Coleman my freshman year at the university, and interestingly enough, I met him uh, not in the building, but on the yard, and he inquired about my name and where I was from. And at that point, being a non-traditional student, I was not eligible to participate in getting scholarships. Um, and he said, well, uh, are you interested in a book scholarship? And I said, absolutely. And so I applied for a book scholarship, of which I ended up getting the second semester of my first year at Lincoln University. And from there, we enjoyed a really his lifelong relationship. As a student, it's two things that just are always etched in my head about Tick Coleman. Number one is that Tick Coleman ran a bus service through the university that I always thought that the university had actually did the bus service, but it was Tick. Uh, Tick used his own funds, and he went on the premise that he was going to get enough people to buy tickets on the bus to be able to, one, chart it and for it to go to Philadelphia on a Friday and pick up the students at 30th Street Station on a Sunday. Uh, again, I always thought that was a university, and I found out later, Tick, the second memory of Tick is learning the alma mater from my freshman year to my sophomore year, my junior year, to my senior year, and even as a trustee. That song is etched in my head that I even find that when I'm cleaning, I'm singing the alma mater. It just has such a vibrance and, and energy to it. And then when I do sing it, I always think about Tick and the wonderful things that he has done. Um, so how did you first meet Tick Coleman though? Uh, I met Tick Coleman during a pump handle. When he was singing the alma mater, I was so, um, I hate to say it, but uh, I was so much of an actual clown, Tick Coleman pulled me off to the side and made sure I was singing the alma mater <laughs> at, at the first end Wow. <laughs> and that's how I met Tick Coleman. That's crazy. <laughs> he wouldn't let me go. I kept trying to leave, and he wouldn't let me go. Would he leave? people in singing the alma mater or how would that go? Tick would always lead people in singing the alma mater and he would uh, coach you along if you did not know the words. And there's a lot of people who do not know the words to that song. Yes. So how would you like, um, I guess how would he get everybody together to sing the alma mater? Uh, there would be gatherings, whether it was convocation uh, or maybe an event uh, or whether he deemed, uh, even if you were in a lunchroom, that it was time to sing the alma mater. And what do you believe the legacy of Tick Coleman is? You know, I always think anyone's greatest legacy is not so much the legacy that they have uh, established while they're alive. Your greatest legacy is when you have tentacles. And that essentially means the branches on your tree. So I consider Tick to be the tree of Lincoln University. Although he is the base, the trunk of that tree, you got to think of the many branches that are. You consider yourself a mentee of Dr. Tacoma? I consider myself another branch on that tree. Mm. And how could I forget about myself? Right. Uh, most certainly that under Tick, and I had the privilege not only knowing him as a student, but also he and I served on the trustee board together. And I just recall that when I came on the board in 2004, uh, after being on the board for a year and being around such uh, committed people from the institution, from the class of 48 all the way through uh, the class of 77, that Tick really incorporated a sense of pride into that institution. And he gave me uh, the strength and, and the idea and the purpose to be even more prideful. So being on the Board of Trustees, I've served as secretary, I served as chair of many different committees, and currently I am the chair of the Board of So Trustees. how did you feel when you won the Tick Coleman Award? Well, you know, at, at the time, uh, even before I wanted, I was looking around like uh, I think I'm wanting to do, is who else ought to be considered for, for the award? Yeah. And because, it, you know, Tick got me to the point where I was really vocal. I'm not as vocal now as I was then. And I always, always thought that there looked at Romini to look around and see there were a number of, of uh, alums uh, who were 
doing some a number of things they kept quiet about. Mm -hmm. And didn't didn't have a Tick Coleman to kind of push their name up and keep it focused. But when all was said and done, you know, I I really felt honored to be even considered for the award and, and almost speechless when, when I got it. What's he say to you when you got the award, Tina? Well, you know, the tick doesn't say much. Oh, he, he he's working behind the scenes. Yes. And he'll congratulate he he, he would congratulate you. Mm -hmm. But also when he congratulated you you can you almost felt that challenge that okay this is one step up you got to keep going what's your there. fondest memory of dr tick coleman that he was a friend mm -hmm. and he was humble he was my fraternity brother and a mentor and he did that from the first day i met him at lincoln to the day he died so did he so how did you first meet dr tick coleman i met tick when i was at lincoln and uh He's a great guy and uh, did a wonderful job uh, inspiring a lot of the students at Lincoln. And he was just a tremendous ambassador for the university. I stand there true.